Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And moving on to the next question. This is a popular one that you may see come up. So we have to show that the point one and eight lies on the right or the perpendicular bisector of the line with the endpoints two and three and six and seven. So a right bisector, perpendicular bisector, both of those mean the same thing. Your teacher, your textbook is probably gonna use one of those terminologies. So there's actually multiple ways to do this question. So I'm gonna show you the different ways. Now to start off, let's draw just kind of a rough diagram of what's happening. And then it's gonna be easily, uh, it's gonna be easy to visually explain first what we're gonna be doing. And then we'll get into the actual algebra. So let's first draw this line with these endpoints two and three, six and seven. So let's say two and three, this is not necessarily gonna be to scale, but let's say we got two and three, let's say six and seven is like over here. So we have this line over here with those endpoints. Now, we're gonna be working with the right or the perpendicular bisector of this line. And just as a review, what is a right bisector? Well, it's a line that bisects this line that cuts it in half that's perpendicular to it. So if it cuts it in half, then we know it's gonna be going through the midpoint. Let's call this point M over here. It's gonna be going through that midpoint and it's also gonna be perpendicular to this line. So this angle between these two lines is going to be 90 degrees and this line is gonna be going through the midpoint right there. Okay, so that's gonna be the perpendicular or the right bisector of this line. And what we have to do is we have to show that the point one and eight lies on this line. So notice that if this is an X value of two, then let's say an X value of one is like over here. And if we follow this up, we gotta show that this point one an eight is gonna lie on that perpendicular bisector. That's what we're gonna be doing. So the first way to do this is to actually find the equation of the right bisector or the perpendicular bisector, which we've done in videos before. And that's gonna give us a line. So it's gonna be in y equals mx plus b form. And then what we can do to confirm that this point, one and eight, lies on this line, well, we can then plug in an x value of one into the equation of the line that we get and just make sure that we get a y value of eight. And then we confirm that this point lies on the line. Or we could plug in a y value of eight and then solve for x, but that's not usually the way to go about it. Usually you plug in the x value, make sure you get the corresponding y value, but you can plug in the corresponding y value, make sure you get that corresponding x value of one. So that's one way to do it. That's the more intuitive way, I feel. Another way that you may see come up is if you think about it, any point that lies on the perpendicular bisector, any point, if you think about it, that point is always going to have the same distance to the endpoints of the line, right? Because it's cutting it in half and it's 90 degrees. So this distance, this distance are gonna be the same, or this distance, this distance are gonna be the same, or this distance, this distance, right? So. Another way you can do this is you could find the distance between one and eight, six and seven, and you can find the distance between one and eight, two and three, and then if they're the same distance, then you're confirming that this point here is on the perpendicular bisector. So that's not the most intuitive way, but it is a way to do it, and it's a way that maybe your teacher's gonna go through and the textbook may go through, so I'll do that way at the end. But the more popular, the more intuitive way is to find the actual equation, get the equation, and then confirm that that point is on that line. It's probably the longer way, but it is the more popular way. So that's the way I'm gonna go through first, but I'll show you that second way 
at the end as well. You could even do it now. We've done, uh, we've gone through length formula examples. You can find the length between this, length between that. You're going to notice it's going to be the same length. All right. So starting with that first way, uh, what are the steps to finding the equation of the perpendicular bisector? Well, we have to find the slope of this line. Then we have to find the perpendicular slope, which would be the negative reciprocal to get the slope of this line. Then we have to find the midpoint. And then we'll have the slope of this line and then a point on that line. Then we could find the equation of that line. And then we can confirm that that point one and eight is on it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna find the slope of this line here. So finding the slope, just in general, what is the slope formula? Well, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we label this x1, y1, x2, y2, we would end up with uh, 7 minus 3 over 6 minus 2, which would give us 4 over 4, which would give us a slope of 1. Right, so this line here with those endpoints has a slope of 1. Again, if you let this be x2, y2, this be x1, y1, you'd end up with negative 4 over negative 4, which would give you the same slope of positive 1. So it doesn't matter which way you go about it. So the slope of that line with these endpoints is 1. So what is the perpendicular slope going to be? That's going to be the slope of the perpendicular bisector. Well, we would take the negative reciprocal of this. So notice 1, it's like over 1. What's the reciprocal of that? Well, it's 1 over 1 again, but then we add a negative. We change the sign. So the perpendicular slope is going to be negative 1. So that's going to be the slope of that perpendicular bisector. And then we have the slope. We got to find also the midpoint of this line segment with those endpoints because that midpoint we're going to use to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector because that midpoint's going to be on the perpendicular bisector. So we already labeled these um, just in general, just as a review, the midpoint formula. It's that right there. So we would do x1 plus x2, so 2 plus 6 divided by 2. And then y1, 3 plus 7 divided by 2. So we'd end up with 8 over 2, which would give us 4. And then we'd end up with 10 over 2, which would give us 5. So that's the midpoint. And then that's the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So what can we do now? We can find the equation of the right bisector. And the right bisector is going to have a slope of negative 1, and then it's going to have a point 4 and 5. So now we just have to find the equation of a line with this slope going through this point. So we'll have y equals, it's going to be y equals mx plus b. First, I plug in the slope. And then you could plug in 5 for y, and then I'm going to plug in 4 for x. So we'll have 5 equals negative 4 plus b, bring the negative 4 over, b is equal to 9. So the equation of the right bisector ends up being y equals negative x plus 9. To find this b value, you may also be using the y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 formula. Personally, I prefer to do it this way. But if you do it that way, just make sure you're getting that same b value of 9, getting that same equation, y equals negative x plus 9. So we have the equation of the bisector. And now the fifth step is just we have to confirm or verify that 1 and 8 lie on this line, on the line of that perpendicular bisector. So again, we could plug in 
uh, 1 for x, so we'll have negative 1 plus 9. Well, what do we get? We get a y value of 8. So that right there confirms that 1 and 8 lies on that line, the line of the perpendicular bisector. If you didn't get 8 here, if you got some kind of other number, then you got to go back, check your steps. If you plugged in 8 for y, right, less common, but another way to, um, to confirm it is plug in y, make sure you get an x value of 1. And if we do that, notice we could bring the x over, turn it to a positive x, bring the 8 over, it'll turn into a minus 8, and then we get an x value of 1, as expected. So whichever way you do it, both of these confirm that 1 and 8 is on the perpendicular bisector, and that's it. You're pretty much done at that point. So that's the first way to do it the more intuitive way. And then the other way, as I mentioned, you could find the distance between that point and both endpoints and make sure that the distances are the same. Or distance length, both of them are the same thing. So we'd have the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So from here, we got to find two lengths, so let's find first the distance between 2 and 3 and 1 and 8. So I'm going to let this be x1, y1. I'm going to let this be x2, y2. Again, it doesn't matter the order. You'll get the same answer anyway. So we'd end up with uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared like that. So we'd have negative 1 to the power 2 plus 5 to the power 2, which would give us square root of 1 plus 25, which would give us root 26. Okay, so root 26 is the distance between 2 and 3, that endpoint, and 1 and 8. Now let's find the distance between 1 and 8 and 6 and 7. So I'm going to let this be x1, y1. Let's see what we get here. So we'd have the length equaling, let's write out the formula again, so we'd have x2, 1 minus x1 squared plus y2, 8 minus 7, which is y1 squared, like that. And what's going to happen here? negative 5 to the power 2 plus 1 to the power 2, negative 5 to the power 2 is 25, 1 to the power 2 is 1. We end up with that same distance. Okay, so that's another, again, less intuitive way to confirm it. It might be a quicker way, actually. Uh, not as much algebra. It could be maybe more algebra, though, if you start working with fractions and stuff. These were all pretty nice numbers, but nevertheless, it is another way. Personally, I prefer the first way, even if it is a little bit longer, it is more intuitive, and usually I go with the more intuitive process.